Hello, today we're going to take a look at a common need in SharePoint, and that's to move a list from one site to another. Or in our case, what we're doing is actually copying the list from one site to another. Same concept. And if you're moving, of course, when you're done with the copy, you could get rid of the list in the origin site. Surprisingly, Microsoft doesn't yet provide an easy way to do this. There are different methods you can use, but there isn't a simple method to do the process. What I'm going to show in the video today is the easiest way that I know of to accomplish this common need. You do need to be a SharePoint administrator in order to be able to do the steps that I show in the video. So now, let's get SharePoint smart. Okay, so here I am in my SharePoint tenant, and I have a source site called Invoices and a target site where I'm going to move my list over called Marketing. My source site, I have this list called Customers, and that's the list that I want to move over into this other SharePoint site. Now, in order to do the steps in the video, the first thing that you'll need to do is make sure you have SharePoint Online Management Shell. If you never used that before, you need to get that installed. I'm going to provide a link under the video to my help guide about list templates, which is at SharePoint-Boards.com. And in that guide, there's a link to, uh, for the first time, connecting to SharePoint Online Management Shell, if you haven't done that. And if you're a SharePoint admin, this is a must-have tool. So I'm already in SharePoint Online Management Shell. I've already authenticated and logged in. And so all I need to do is the second command here to uh, go ahead and enable custom scripting. So um, you can just copy and paste from this over to your command line interface. And you need to do this for the two sites. Okay, so where it says my site URL here, that's where we're going to do a paste. So my source site is called invoices. Um, I just need to snag that URL. And then I can paste it back over to the command line interface. I'm just replacing where it says my site URL here. Just like so. Okay, and if it doesn't say anything, that's good news. If it didn't like that, it would give us an error message. Um, and basically, I just need to do the same command for my target site as well. If you just hit up arrow in the command prompt, you can, um, you know, make it show the most recent command and then I can modify that. So I know that my target site is called marketing, so I can just type that and hit enter. Okay, that's everything that you're going to have to do in SharePoint Online Management Cell. Piece of cake. Um, you can go ahead and minimize or close that. We're done with that part of it. So the next step is to create a list template. And what I'm going to do is go to my source site. My list is called customers. And then I need to go to the list settings screen. So click on that gear icon, then click on list settings. And then you're going to do save list as template. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and just kind of put the date in this. So I'm going to call this um, customers and we'll say June. 23. Um, you can kind of use what you want for the template name description. I just kind of reuse that over and over and that seems to work fine for me. Now this next part is important to understand. When you're doing SharePoint list templates you do have the option to include content but to a limit. You can only do this um, as long as that content fits within a 50 meg or less file size. Many times with SharePoint lists, it would be more than that. And in the video, I'm going to show you how to be able to move the list even when it's bigger than that. Um, but just so you know, if that is a small list or if you don't need to copy the records in your list, then you won't have to do the last part of this, which is going to be in Power Automate. 
my example, we're going to assume that it's more than 50 megabyte, even though it's definitely not. It's only a handful of records. I want to show um, how to do the more difficult path. Um, but that tells you about include content. So basically use that if you can or if you need it. Um, but if you can't do that, if you've got a really large list, then you're going to be able to use Power Automate at the end of this to get all the list records over. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it will say that's successful. It provides me a handy link to the list template gallery. I could just jump right there, but just so that you know how to find it in case you didn't do that or needed to get back to it later, if I go to the list settings screen, um, if I go to the gear icon and then go to site information, uh, list settings, view all settings, and you'll find a link to it under web designer galleries. It says list templates. This is only appearing because I have enabled the custom scripting. If you haven't done that step, you're not going to see this option. So that's key. Okay, there is the list template which I just created. Next step, simple, just click on it. What's going to happen is it's going to download an STP file to your local computer. And that incorporates the views that are saved in the list, the field definitions, all that type of information. And also, if you did include content, it would include the list records as well. Um, that's everything that I need to do with the source site. Now we can go over to the target site. Same thing. I need to go to the gear icon, go to site information, view all site settings, and go to that same screen for list templates. On this page, I need to click on the Files tab, then click on Upload Document, and now I can browse to the file which I just downloaded from the source site. Okay, there it is, customersjune23.stp. Okay, and it just lets me confirm. Um, as I say, I just tend to use the same thing over and over again. I don't find that there's especially a need to differentiate between the name, the title, the description, etc., and so on. We're just really doing this one time. So I just hit save. Now this list template is available in my target site, so I can now create a list from that. So I can go back to the home on my target site, and in fact what I want to do is go to site contents. On the site content screen, we have to do something a little unusual. We need to switch into the classic SharePoint view in order to create the list from the list template. So I'll click on that link on the lower left and you'll see the interface change to the classic SharePoint view. Now the next thing I need to do is click add an app and you're going to scroll through these tiles and you will find that list template that you just added will be available. And what you should see that is that it's towards the end. There it is, Customers June 23. So I just click on that. Now, at this stage, obviously, I don't want to call it Customers June 23. You could call it whatever you want. Probably I want to call it the same name as it was originally, which was simply a list called Customers. Advanced options, there's not really anything additional you need to do, so you can uh, skip that part of it. So just Customers is fine. Click Create. All right, there it is. There's our new list. Now that we've done that step, we don't want to be in this ugly classic SharePoint interface anymore. So be sure to click on Exit Classic Experience. And of course, your list is still there. So what have we accomplished at this point? If you were lucky enough that you either A, did not need to include content from your source list, you just needed the list, fields, and views, you're good to go. If you had a small amount of content, less than 50 megabyte, and you did the include content, all your list records are going to be there as well. In those cases, you're already done. Really easy. Now, in the case that's a little bit more complicated, where you've got lots of SharePoint list records, and you didn't have the convenience of being able to do the include content option, 
now we're going to have to get into the power automate. But at this stage, that um, source list is now over in our target site. What we're missing are the list records. And so now we'll talk about how you can do that power automate. This is one of the simpler power automate workflows that you would ever need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna hop over into Power Automate. I'm gonna do a new flow, and I'm gonna do uh, instant cloud flow. And I'm gonna call this move customers from source to target. Okay, we'll do manually trigger flow, that's fine. Great. Okay, so here we are in Power Automate. And the first thing we need to do is get all the records in the source list. So I need to do new step. This is get items. Okay, so do click get items. Now I need to identify the site address. So we're removing that um, from our source site, which is called invoices. We're going from the invoices site to marketing. Okay, so I'm going to hit my drop down and I just need to find invoices. The list name is, of course, customers. And then what I need to do is go to the advanced options. Now, in, in Power Automate, when you have lots of items in a list, what you need to do is go to the settings and I need to do enable pagination. I'm going to set the threshold to 5,000. What's going to happen if you don't do this is it won't bring back all the records for you. And we wanna make sure we do get all of the records. Okay, so I'm all set on that. And now I can go ahead and do my next step, which is I need to do a for each. So I'm gonna click on control and use that apply to each option. Pick the first option that you see on the right. And now we're going to, of course, create an item. So for each of these, we will uh, create item and now we're referencing the target site um, so this is marketing now so I will go down here to marketing and I need to designate the list where I'm going to create items which is customers okay and lucky for us this is a really easy exercise basically I put in the same field name each time couldn't get any easier than that so I have this get items loop and you can type in the names if you want to or just pick from the list, but it's a one-to-one. -one. Customer goes to customer, email goes to email, so on. Pretty easy stuff. So I'll just finish filling all those in. done a lot of workflow in Power Automate and this is about the easiest thing you could do. Um, so I hope you find that to be the case. All right, I'll type in this one, postal code. Sometimes that can speed things up. Terms, there's terms. Um, that part, you can just leave it alone. You don't need to mess with that. Now, I'll go ahead and save that. And because I have a small set of records, this probably will execute really quickly. Um, oh, it's complaining at me because it thinks I should be more efficient with the query. You can ignore the error. Don't worry about that. Everything's going to work just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and run our flow. Have to go through a few dialogues the first time just to confirm before I can run. It's running. Um, because we have a relatively small set of records, I'm expecting that this is going to execute quickly. Four seconds, pretty good. Okay, so here is our source list, and we'll just do a visual check just to make sure things look how we expected. There were six records, and here's our target list. There they are. There's the six records. Boom, we did everything. Now, if you have lots of list records in SharePoint, that's not a problem um, because it's just going to run for a while. So we basically will just set that off, walk away from it. It will do its job. You know, depending on how many items you have, maybe it could take a few hours. Um, that's okay. It'll just keep working until it's done doing everything. 
Okay, that's everything you needed to know um, on moving a SharePoint list. So I say moving, this showed how to copy that. Now naturally, at this stage, if you wanted to get rid of the list in the source site, you could just delete the list. Um, some additional considerations that I wanted to bring up. If you have any lookup fields, that's a dependency. And that would mean you need to first copy over your lookup fields from the source site over to the target site. If you don't do that, uh, naturally things are going to break down. So uh, be sure to check to see if you have any of those lookup fields. That would be something that you want to be aware of. There are alternative methods to do what I showed in the video. You could, as an example, do PowerShell scripting. If that's something you're familiar with, and you like a more scripted approach, um, you can pursue that. There's some things about that that might be a little bit easier or faster. Some things are a lot more complicated. It really just depends on your background and experience. Um, it's certainly worthwhile to explore uh, different options. In my opinion, that's a more complex approach than what I demonstrated in the video. Another thing is third-party tools. There are third-party tools out there, migration tools specifically, that are very good at this type of activity that we're doing in the video. But also they can be expensive and not everybody has access to those third-party tools. So that may not be an option for you. But this is a particular type of thing that migration tools do quite nicely. Another option which I would discourage you from pursuing, but it certainly can work, you could export the data to an Excel workbook from the source list and then you can import that workbook into your target list. Um, certainly nothing invalid about the approach, um, but that's a little bit more clunky and you run into some issues that has, have to do with SharePoint names and things like that. So um, not quite as clean in my opinion. Um, I would generally recommend that you try to stay away from that, um, but that is another possibility. So there's more than one way to do this. We just looked at a clean, simple way you can do this that's easy to understand. It's very repeatable um, when you run into this scenario. So I hope you found this useful. This does come up a lot where you need to get a SharePoint list from one site over into another site. And there just isn't a simple, you know, quick click a couple buttons option to do that in SharePoint. So this is going to be your best strat what we reviewed in the video today. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And I will have links below the video to some of the references of things that I did during the session. Good luck.